Hello, it's Cynthia D. Lorenzi with Success in the City, and we've got a great guest for you today. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Robert Clark, who is the head of Clark Labs and a researcher at Georgetown University. I've met Dr. Clark before. He actually came um, to present to a group of people interested in understanding what kind of research is happening today at Georgetown and some of the interesting approaches he's taken to help people become involved with what's going on research because it seems like it's the castle on the hill especially when you think about Georgetown University it's high on a hill but you think about the ivory towers where there's something going on behind there and we're not part of that how are projects determined how are they funded I mean funding dollars are not as available as they used to be so Dr. Clark thank you for joining us today you are most welcome my pleasure to be here so tell me a little bit about your background and and what you do at Georgetown University. So I'm a researcher. I, my own research happens to be in breast cancer. Um, currently I'm the Dean for Research, so I'm responsible for all of the research that goes on within the Medical Center. And when we met we were talking about the uh, Partners in Research program, which is a way in which we try to involve members of the community in the research that we do and in the decisions that we make to support research. So, so let's talk for a moment about the kinds of research. I know that you are doing research on breast cancer, which is certainly one of the important research that's going on today, especially with what seems to be an ever-rising incident of breast cancer in the population. But you also do neuroscience and other type research at the, at the university? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we have probably cancer and the neurosciences and, and neurology research would be two of our biggest strengths here at Georgetown, and we have a long history of both. So, so tell me a little bit about how that happens, how students pick and choose what they're going to be studying or research, and, and then how the next step happens. So, kind of, so if I'm a student right now and I'm interested in neuroscience, or I have a project, how does that happen? What do I do? Come to you and say this is what I want to do? Well, a lot of students have, a, have an idea ahead of time of what, what, they're, what they really want to do, what they're interested in, what excites them. And they try to find somebody here who has that same interest, usually a faculty member who has a lab or a research program. And they'll come and they'll talk to them and if they hit it off and they're interested in doing something together, then off they go and, and, and get started. It really depends. Each student is different, their interests, their background, what really fires them up and gets them excited and gets them out of bed in the morning to get into the lab. It's different for everybody. So tell, let's talk a bit about that research and you know, Partners in Research program. I was so intrigued by that and everybody who was in attendance was absolutely either already a partner in the program or very interested. Tell us a little bit about what that program is and how you came up with this idea. So we really wanted to find a way to get people in the community engaged in what we do. And it took a little while to come up with the concept. It wasn't uh, my idea initially. It, it actually came from Vivian Marion who works in our advancement office. But the idea was the basic question was, you know, people pay their taxes and that goes to the government and into a great black hole and some of it eventually finds its way into NIH and it's a big black hole and research eventually gets done. But there's no real connection between the people at one end and the people at the other. And we thought it would be really interesting to get people engaged in science and perhaps help us do some of the work and learn something about what we do. So we got uh, developed this program called Partners in Research where people in the community can come to Georgetown, they can learn about the research that we do and if they wish to help and contribute some of their resources to do it, they can pick the studies that get funded, which is a little bit different because what we do is we have an internal review program that, that asks our own investigators, you know, send us your best ideas and we'll sift through them and figure out which ones we, we think are really good and then we'll have you come and tell the people in, in the community that come to our, our program what it is you're doing and why they should support you and they'll pick the ones that really interest and excite them because people that are in the community are not scientists, they, they, they don't have a, a way to necessarily 
evaluate the quality of the work or know what the impact would be or what the relevance to human health would be. But we kind of do because that's our job. So we use the expertise that we have at Georgetown to rank them in terms of their scientific quality. And then we just say, well, you know, we don't care which of these you pick because they're all good because we've been through them and it's whatever really interests you. Um, we'd like you to pick which ones should get supported. And that's a very, very different approach. It is a unique approach and I'm really intrigued by this approach of research because a lot of great ideas come to the table and I like number one that you vetted them before you say these are based on good sound reasoning principles we believe there's great promise here and then you go back to the partners who have pledged financially to support them and then they get to vote which ones will get those funding dollars does that pretty much summarize it beautifully put so what happens if you if as a partner um, we've together come and selected out of the 16 or 20 um, opportunities for research and we've selected five and does it cover it for the year does, does it go is it ongoing do they come back and say here are new opportunities or we're going to fund a second round of research and will each of the participants or the partners get a, re a report on how each of the research projects proceeded Okay, you've asked a lot of things all at once. I did. I've got a lot of questions. I always do. Well, let me see if I can take on some of them. I'll start at the end because that's the easiest one. Yes, of course, they all get a report. In fact, they have the opportunity to come during the year when the research is, is, is ongoing, meet the, the, the uh, faculty member, visit their lab, see the research uh, ongoing in place, and get a very clear sense of, of what's happening. It's it's not just a one-off. It's a it's it's an engagement that we hope will grow and excite people, and we want them to go and tell everybody else how wonderful the work is here and how excited they were about it. Because that's a good thing for everybody. So yes, they all they get the opportunity to follow up. Um, it funds what we are trying to do is fund very early stage research. Research where there's a, a, an idea that's potentially transformative, but it's pretty early on because that's the work that NIH won't fund. Uh, it, it likes to fund, um, you know, work that's a little bit more advanced or developed, where there's a better sense of what the likelihood of success will be, where it's clear what the impact would be and where it's going. And that's a perfectly rational um, series of, of criteria to evaluate research. But something has to get it to that stage. There has to be some experiments done, some data that builds the idea and says, you know, this probably is worth doing. And there's a reasonable chance that if we do it right, it's going to work and tell us something. And it's very hard to support that very, very early stage research. So those are the sort of ideas that we're looking for. And we're particularly excited when young folks come in with those ideas because it's they're also in a place in their career where it's hardest to convince um, the more established scientists that they should take a risk on an idea from a young person who maybe doesn't have a track record yet. So it's an interesting balance between finding exciting, novel, potentially really impactful ideas and getting them off the ground and at the same time try to help some young people get their career started. We don't only fund young people, we fund on the basis of the science, but we get really excited when it's the young people that get can you share one of your success stories of one of the programs that were funded and, and the results or the outcome of that study and research? Wow, there, where should I start? <laughs> it's the question. Um, we have a number that have done really very well. Um, some of them have already been funded. In other words, they were supported by, by partners in research and have gone on to attract other funding or they've been published in some high quality journals. Others are still works in progress because they're very early, often very early stage research, as I said. Um, hard to give you a, a, a single example because they were all in different stages and the program has only been running for a couple of years. Uh, but we have funded a fairly diverse portfolio of, of research that goes from macular degeneration to trying to understand drug resistance in some cancers 
um, that really reflect some of the great strengths of the programs that we have here in Georgetown. Have, has this program, I know it's still very early on, you're only a couple years old, but has it captured the interest of any other universities or schools or labs or any other research centers? Uh, good question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, well, you should find out. <laughs> it certainly got the attention of our faculty and our students. They've been very uh, excited by it, and the, the responses that we get when we ask for proposals is really, really exciting. It's we get a lot. We get a lot of really good ones. We have difficulty picking the best ones. There's a lot of really good stuff going on. I imagine if it's somebody who's really interested in medicine and research, that would be a part of making the decision of where you'd want to go to school. I would think that if I had some really great ideas, because a lot of people have these ideas very early on of approaches and if they discovered a place where they may be able to find the support and the funding to move that forward, I think that would be very appealing as a student. Uh, I agree. I think our students get really fired up when they come here. Hey, you know, the nice thing is they're young people, they're excited, they don't have the, the limitations or the constrictions in their, their thinking that we sometimes get forced to in our careers as we get a little older. Um, that's what's so fun about running a program like this. When you get young people coming in, they, they really is, are no limitations to the way that they think and, the, and, and their level of imagination and what they want to achieve and their enthusiasm and their energy for doing it. It's really invigorating. So how does somebody go about finding out more information about Partners in Research and how to become involved and perhaps how to reach out to you and uh, pledge some more support? Probably the easiest thing is to go to our website. Uh, we're on the uh, Georgetown University Medical Center website. Uh, you should be able to put in partners in research in the search box and we should pop right up. Excellent. And how often do you have meetings for your partners? It's, it's ongoing, isn't it? It's ongoing. We run several programs. The, the partners in research specifically is uh, where we obtain financial resources from, from uh, community members to support the projects, the way I described. We have other programs to inform the community for which there is, is no obligation whatsoever, ever, like the uh, Doctors Speak Out series. So we will run three or four of those a year that are open to anyone. Um, people can come, they can listen to the discussion. We have experts in various different fields come and give their opinions, answer questions, and try and inform people. Uh, so that's another way in which we try to reach out to the community. I think this is fabulous. Dr. Clark, I can't thank you enough for taking time to join us today and share some information about the work you're doing and partners in research. I think it's a fascinating program. I think it's a great idea. And anybody who knows me know I love great ideas. And I like to approach the challenges we face every day in this world in a new way. So if you're interested in learning more about partners in research, about the work that's going on at Georgetown University, about medical studies and research, check out Georgetown University, just do a Google search. You can Google in or just in your search box, put Partners in Research or Dr. Robert Clark, that's C-L-A-R-K-E, and he's also the director of Clark Labs. And I can't thank you enough for taking time to join us today. My pleasure. Yeah. Happy to and come back anytime you like. Okay, I want to have you back once you start having some more studies and reports to share with us. Promise me you'll come back on our show. I would love to do that. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Thank you. you have a great, great weekend. You too.